At nine o'clock that evening, George Ellsworth arrived at the consulate in Frankfurt. He was directed to Ben Waltman's office. Please, sit down. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Ellsworth, I'm here because I wanted a few minutes with you. I need your help. A passport matter. Oh? The German police picked up a woman named Erika Rilke. They think her passport and visa are fraudulent. Now, she says she knows you slightly. Says you helped her in some way. Well, yes, yes, I remember, but I can assure you that her passport and visa were quite in order. Know her well? Oh, uh, no, no, not uh, very. She, she was orphaned during the war. She's poor. Uh, she wanted to get out of Warsaw for good. She has a brother here in Frankfurt, and uh, he's uh, very sick. In fact, he's dying, and... Hello, George. What is this? Well, there are a few questions we want answered. I don't have to answer anything. Will you bring Miss Rilke in, please? George, oh, my God, I have to see you. What's this all about? Now, just take it easy, darling. Just take it easy. All right, Jim. Obviously, you know about us. So? We know. You were together here in April. We had you under surveillance. This is my private life, Jim. Stay out of it. You were taken, George. You've been had. What? She's lied How to you. How can you say such a thing? That's you not lied true. to him. He's the one that's lying, darling. I don't believe him. What are they trying to do? She's booked passage on a plane for Warsaw. Tomorrow. She never wanted to leave Poland. Did you? No. No, I swear to you, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No. You know this man, George? He sent the telegram to Miss Rilke about her dying brother, and we don't have to prove that. He's admitted it. Du Feigling. Du niederträchtige Sau! 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 You were taken, George. George! Don't believe it. Oh. George! George. George. George, you've got to tell me the truth. Did you give any secret information to the communists? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, just leave me alone. George, don't lie to me. I've got to know what kind of information it was. Look, a lot of classified material goes into Poland by telegram in code. George, stop! Listen to me! Listen! You're not a traitor. I know that. You just got trapped. The communists have got copies of those telegrams. If you pass them any translations, they can crack that code. We've got to know. We can't go on sending messages in a code that they know. George, I can't stop you. You know that. By midnight tonight, you'll be on your way home. We'll never know, but you'll know. And I don't think you can live with that, George. You're taking your kids home to teach them they're Americans. Who's going to teach them that, George? You? You can't keep it inside you. I know you too well. Sooner or later, you'll tell. And may be too late. By keeping quiet about it now, it might cause damage to hundreds, thousands of people, because you didn't speak up in time. Did you give Dakota material to the communists? It takes guts. I know you got them. It happened the way you said, Jim, the way they planted. A woman, blackmail. I guess I got panicky. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought that maybe once and then they'd let me off the hook. But it didn't work that way. I kept getting in deeper. How many documents? Six. But none of it was decoded stuff, Jim, I swear to that. It's mostly material that 
our local intelligence officers gathered about the communist activities around Warsaw, things the communists already knew. But all they gained was that now they know that we know a lot of their secrets. There was no coded stuff, Jim. You want to go back upstairs, tell it for the record? circles, it's often said that peace or war may hinge on who reads a single piece of paper. Because of that, the problem of security is a vital one. Now, there aren't many Jim Kowalskis. The State Department's Office of Security numbers just 235 men. We have 300 missions overseas. It's a big job, but then they're big men. 